gentlemen, we've seen the president two weeks ago, couldn't get the bill passed. We put out a special video, Obama launches gun grab, showing Congress months ago saying, we're going to pass a bill where when you sell uh, two or more rifles, uh, that the uh, form has to be filled out, a lengthy form on the person and sent to the ATF, even though they already have the National Gun Tracking Center, they already have the instant check, you already have your background check runs at the FBI, they already write down uh, handgun, rifle, shotgun, they already know. It's about setting the precedent outside of law uh, to just say, we say do this, now jump. We pick these four states and say that you have to do this. And I talked to two different Austin gun dealers and to someone in my office. And one of them talked to the ATF, one of the gun dealers. And we're going to Larry Pratt. I want to fill you in on this. We put a special report out on, uh, as you know, yesterday. And the gun owner, the gun shop owner, called the ATF agent he knows, Daniel Jones here in Austin the guy that runs a little sting operations against the gun shows to shut them down using illegal aliens. And he, he told them, this is weeks before they got the letter, he said, don't worry, that bill didn't pass, so we're not going to implement something that didn't law. Well, guess what? Didn't pass, they did it anyways. And it's a test. It's a tyrant's test. War in Libya. Congress says, well, you got to come to us for approval. Well, we'll even give it to you. He says, I don't need your approval. Puts out a statement saying this is for the legitimacy of the UN, that's a quote, that's treason. I take my orders from the UN, not the stinking constitution. Carbon taxes outside of congressional law. Waivers to his buddies on health care outside of law. Waivers uh, on the carbon taxes. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, it goes on and on and on and on. And I am literally not scared. It's more like once a car wreck's already started and you're flipping down a ditch, I've been in a couple really bad car wrecks. One time a tornado blew me off the road. I told you that story. Me and my dad almost got killed. But once you're already flipping, you're not really scared. You're mainly just trying to hold on. And, and, and I'm seeing this, and, and, and it's happening with a whimper, not a bang. Now, if you just joined us, I just read from CBS News saying, oh, it's so wonderful. The 12-member the board will create the legislation. It doesn't come from the bottom of the House anymore. It isn't debated. They will present it to the House and the Senate for an up or down vote, and then if they don't agree to what they're presented, then the Super Congress goes ahead and decides what to cut. I read you that from CBS News in the last segment. Article titled, A Summary of the Debt Ceiling Compromise. And by the way, the Senate just passed it. I mean, I, I am feeling sick at my stomach. Super Congress, here's another report, Super Congress Debt Ceiling Negotiations aim to create new legislative body. That's Huffington Post. Okay, this is not debated. This is not debated. And yes, the Senate just voted um, two minutes ago. They've passed it. Incredible treason. We'll give you the vote count as soon as we get it. Larry Pratt of Gunners of America is our guest. And he, of course, put out a legislative alert saying Congress should decide whether Super Congress can impose gun control. And the way it reads, and I've got the latest text, I've got the Senate text, read it an hour before I got on air. Uh, it has language in it. And here's Harry Reid quoted in the Associated Press, the Joint Committee... There are no constraints, Reid said on the Senate floor. They can look at any problem we have in government, any problem. It has an ability to look at everything. The power to tax, cut, regulations. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a council of 13 because the president has that veto. Talk about cryptic. Talk about creepy. And Gun Owners of America, legislative alert, Congress to decide whether Super Congress could impose gun control. Ron Paul says it's a disturbing power grab, establishes a new system of government. Uh, I've got his quotes here. Um, he says this will allow unlimited tax increases, no more filibusters, no more amendments. We are wide open. It's, it's like in Star Trek. The shields are down. We're just getting hit right now. I mean, this, again, I say I get chills. I used to get chills once a year when something freaked me out. I get them every five minutes now here on air. The hair on the back of my neck standing up. Total tyranny is being released. I'm going to try to be calm here, but the Senate just passed this. If we don't have a Constitution and a Bill of Rights, we don't have anything. Every other country that has gone this way goes to hell in a handbasket.
Larry Pratt, I'm sorry to be getting emotional here, but I am completely <laughs> freaked out. I, I can tell when a guy's on a table. You know, this, this is kind of like the council in Plato where they go out behind the bulrushes and decide in secret what's going to be done, and then everybody else just kind of has to lump it. When this thing comes forth, when this super congress comes forth with some nutty idea, which could easily have gun control along with tax increases, uh, it goes to the president. Uh, it would take 34 votes as, uh, to sustain what what all is going on. I mean, they've they've really set it up so you almost can't stop blessed thing. We need to vote against so many people, starting in the primaries next year. So many need to go. I sure hope people uh, like Ron Johnson of. Uh, of uh, Wisconsin, uh, a plastics manufacturer. He just got so fed up with what was going on that he uh, got talked into running, actually. He, he became a Tea Party favorite in the state, speaking to a number of places, and that kind of built up his popularity. We need people like that to come out of the comfort of our homes and to stand for office. Uh, we but if we allow a super Congress to be set, and, 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 and they kind of blandly go along and train us to accept it, they can start shutting off more and more true power of the House and Senate, and that's what this does. I mean, this Absolutely. is... Absolutely. Have you ever seen anything like this, Larry? That, oh, that's why the first act of the next Congress, hopefully, is going to be to repeal this horrible piece of legislation, which threatens everybody's agenda, not just gun owners, but they can do terrible things to property owners, to taxpayers, uh, businesses. This is, uh, it is a game changer. They have decided that we don't need the House of Representatives to originate um, revenue bills. We'll just have uh, the uh, the Super 12 uh, do that. And as you said, the Council of 13, really, with uh, the president thrown in for bad measure. So oh it's, my God. it's just an extraordinary thing. And uh, there were some, I, I think, some fairly well-intended people that just got flummoxed, but there were some that knew exactly what they're doing, and I would include in that John Boehner and the Senate Minority Leader, uh, Mr. McConnell, and of course, Harry Reid knew very well what he was doing. Oh yeah, Mitch McConnell two weeks ago proposed just giving the power of the purse to Obama. That's not his power to give. Right, I mean, exactly. he's speaking for all, I mean, he can't do that. I mean, Larry... Pratt, is this not classical treason? I mean, this is changing the form of our government. Well, we had to change the form of the government because we can't stop spending like drunks locked inside the liquor store. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, they, they refuse to deal with the problem, and so they create another totally different, humongous problem. And meanwhile, the cuts for this year are going to be less than two days expenditure. Oh, yeah, I, I've gone through the numbers. Most of it's in the next 10 years, and they never do that. And that's what we call here fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's like it's like the Easter Bunny. Well, well, Larry Pratt, I mean, listen, this has all been done by design. We have the, the 10 governors now speaking for the states, the governor's council. We have the rural affairs run by the Defense Department and Homeland Security. Uh, we ha You heard me earlier as I introed you. We have the ATF coming out and saying, well, we're just going to order you to do things because we couldn't get this law passed. And, 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 they, and they actually call them demand letters. <laughs> we're demanding that you give us the information. And if the dealer doesn't, well, they, they've had his neck in a noose uh, ever since he got his license, and they can pull that license. But that's my point, Larry. I've never seen such a bum rush of tyranny. On every front, they're just doing whatever they want. Mm -hmm. I think they really are going for dictatorship. And I don't mean a dictatorship of Obama. You know, he'll leave probably. But a dictatorship of the bureaucracy and the special interest. I mean, are you... Uh, have you ever seen anything this this off the chart? Well, like that um, family that, that ha I guess it was actually the kid that was raising a lot of bunnies, and they faced a monster fine from the Department of Agriculture because they didn't have the department's permission. There shouldn't be a Department of Agriculture. Where is that in the Constitution? Finding a, a little boy millions of dollars because uh, ra he had rabbits breeding like, well, rabbits? <laughs> well, but, but being Larry... I mean, I'm asking you, have you ever seen such a brazen move? How would you describe this Council of 13? Um, 
this is something that even FDR wouldn't have uh, thought he could have gotten away with. This is, uh, this is such a brazen strike at our liberty that... Um, uh, and you know that uh, Boehner and McConnell are going to appoint wusses. So it's not going to be, uh, you know, Michelle Bachman uh, as one of the House representatives. <laughs> it's, you know, a bitter ender that is, a, is against all this uh, wild spending. They're going to put reasonable people on there. And these reasonable people will be the ones that continue to lead us into dictatorship. Well, they don't have the power. It's not in our Constitution to create a super Congress and say, we will originate the legislation from the top. I mean, this is classic tyranny. Yep. This is a larger version of court site where the police chief uh, fires the mayor when he can't and fires 80% of the cops and they don't go along with it. Uh, this is a microcosm. Uh, of, uh, of, 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 of these men up there transferring more power to themselves uh, with Obama and the White House is pleased as punch. Uh, Larry, we're seeing an acceleration here and, 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 and you know, disagree if you disagree, but uh, we're seeing a massive acceleration. Week to week, it gets crazier. Who would have ever thought corrupt government-run health care with the president's buddies exempt? Who would have ever thought ATF telling gun shops to do things that aren't the law? Uh, who would have ever thought the ATF shipping guns to Mexico to blame the Second Amendment? Who would have ever thought wars in Libya with al-Qaeda now recognized as, at the U.S. Embassy as the official government? Literal, admitted, real al-Qaeda. Who would have ever thought that we'd see all of this? I mean, we're living in the twilight zone. Yeah, we've got chickens coming home to roost. We've had the schools teaching us for years and years that we live in a democracy. Well, if people think that way, then the assumption is... When I win an election, I can do anything I want because I won and I got the votes. That's not the way it works in a republic, and people don't understand that there are barrier limits. That's what the Constitution's all about. It is not alive. It is not breathing. It is there to chain you down when you work for me and the government. Well, Larry, here's my question to you. This is the big issue. and we, How did we end up with a vote with the majority of the Republicans here voting for this. It was a majority of Republicans, I think I'm looking for the vote count here, I'll pull up in a minute, uh, who went for this. Yeah, it was only about 69 that opposed it. And uh, since there's, what, uh, 240, give or take, Republicans, that, that means a humongous number went for it. And a pretty substantial part of the Dems went for it as well. And the ones that didn't were believing in their own left-wing propaganda that somehow um, they were getting uh, thrashed. Well, <laughs> they'll take a deep breath one of these days and realize, hey, we just pulled off a coup d'etat. Not bad. <laughs> but this proves continuity of agenda. Bush with the banker bailout, Obama continues yep. it. I, yep. mean, I mean, they just... They just continue on where the other one left off they're part of the ruling class and yeah there's a republican group of the ruling class and a democrat part and there are some differences but uh, by and large except for the, the some of the newbies and 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 people who have been around for a while like bachman and steve king uh we you only got about 65 or so members of the house of representatives that have any idea what a republic means what uh, a a vote needs to look like if it's going to be a constitutional vote. And the rest the, of the 435 members of that Congress apparently don't have a clue. We're talking about, well, there would be a few senators in there too. Maybe less than 20 percent uh, and they're all the rest of some 80 percent are clueless. They think they can do whatever they want. Well, I think we need to have some political reprisals on these people. I mean, we need to be talking about see you in November. Well, I agree, and I'm here to tell you, anyone that voted for this is either an absolute criminal traitor or doesn't know how to boil water, doesn't know how to tie their shoelaces. And so the 174 Republicans that voted for this absolutely must be removed. The 95 Democrats absolutely must be removed. The vote, 174 Republicans, 95 Democrats for anybody. And, and it, it was mainly Tea Party people that voted against it on the Republican side. Uh, and we have a New York Times editorial today that, and I'm going to read it later, that actually says the Tea Party are, are terrorists, they are the new terrorists, go after them, or, you know, basically you arrest know, them. Alex, that's serious, because when, when we start seeing language like that used, what is the proper thing to do to a terrorist? Well, to kill him. 
So they're using the kind of words that Hitler and Lenin and Idi Amin and Paul Pot were using. They're, they're doing what Alinsky teaches. They are, they are particularizing, personalizing, and marginalizing uh, so that the enemy is really an enemy, and he needs to be liquidated, exterminated, just like dictators have done everywhere. Absolutely. They're selling the idea in the New York Times, and I'm going to read the quote here in a moment, that anybody who actually wants to cut government ought at the Federal Reserve as a terrorist. Uh, here it is out of the New York uh, Times. It says, can't we do this right? Thomas L. Freeman. And here's the quote. Alas, at the Tea Party, it is so lacking in any aspiration for American greatness. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so dominated by the narrowest visions of our country and so ignorant of the fact that it was not tax cuts that made America great. Oh, really, that's what it was fought over. But our unique public-private partnerships, oh, <laughs> across the generations, if sane Republicans do not stand up to the Hezbollah faction <laughs> in their midst, the Tea Party will take the GOP on a suicide mission. No American political uh, politician was more allergic to debt or taxes than Thomas Jefferson. But he also, and it goes on from there. But listen, uh, here's the bad news. Debt bill passes Senate, headed to Obama. Uh, unsure of AAA USA credit rating will suffer from the spectacle. So, so, so the idea is anybody that doesn't want to increase taxes and go deeper into debt, you're the ones hurting America, not the people that did this, Larry. In a sense, I guess we are terrorists. By that very article that you were reading, you can tell he is terrorized. It terrorizes the status to think that we might take some of their power away and put them into the constitutional box they were intended to stay within. That does bring terror to them. Uh, they can't think of living by producing anything. They have to live by taking from all the rest of us. And, you know, I think the rest of us are just about finished being taken. We've had it. Well, well that is a good point. Uh, at the end of the day, the, we are really getting a front row seat to total corruption and tyranny. And the wake up's only accelerating. Larry, I drive around Austin. I see Infowars.com stickers everywhere, but not just that, not just Ron Paul stickers everywhere. I see huge things on the sides of nice cars, uh, you know, junky cars, <laughs> you name it. Legalize the Constitution, <laughs> you know, arrest it. the politicians. Folks are angry. Yes, and we. I think we're going to stay angry. I think it was not just the town halls that uh, got us uh, to a point where we had to deal with our elected officials, but Wisconsin, I think, was something that stirred the whole country. This thing now, I, I believe, is going to continue our agitation. Yeah, we're going to stay angry. Stay there, Larry Pratt. I'm going to do one more segment on the raft of anti-gun legislation uh, that is waiting that now can pass without amendment or without filibuster. The, the big attack's coming. The Senate passes the Council of 13 dictatorship, a new form of government, is now in place in the United States. And it's been done in a little lawyerly packaged way to look nonchalant like it's no big deal, camouflaging how deadly dangerous this Trojan horse is. And uh, now the president is saying that this is just the first step and is set to uh, give a speech, and they've cheered in the House, trillions more in debt, uh, the dollar began plunging again, and gold exploded to an all-time new super high of $1,642 and $70 an ounce. $1,642 plus dollars. Now, Larry Pratt, in the last four or five minutes, I want to encourage folks to sign up for your legislative updates. I was driving home at 6 o'clock last night and literally almost ran off the road. Uh, when I was at a, actually at a red light reading it, but then did get upset driving home and actually shot a video while I was driving and uploaded it to YouTube. Uh, when, I, when I read your alert, called the office, had them check. Folks can sign up for the free legislative alerts at gunowners.org or, God forbid, get a, a membership and actually support the only real no-compromise Second Amendment group. But uh, continuing, what are, what are the new anti-gun pieces of legislation that folks should know about that now can't be amended or filibustered? Well, they've been uh, talking a lot about putting people that have been on these no-fly lists, terrorist watch lists, people that haven't been adjudicated of anything. This is a law enforcement tool. But now they're saying, well, that's enough to deny somebody their right to keep and bear arms. And there are bills that have been discussed to do just that, Frank Lautenberg, the gun grabber from New Jersey in the U.S. Senate, uh, is a, a longtime supporter of this kind of thing. And this is the very kind of thing that I can see coming in some little amendment from the Committee of Twelve. And um, 
you know, what are we going to do about it? We can't amend it. Uh, we need a super majority, like passing a treaty to overturn it. Um, they pretty well got themselves where they can do anything they want. And again, you are calm about this. You're professional, the head of a you know, you know, huge patriotic organization. But, I mean, at a certain point, Larry, we got to start jumping up and down. I mean, you've got Rahm Emanuel. You've got them all. They've introduced bills, as you know, where magically you get on a list and can't own guns anymore. No conviction, no arrest. Uh, the president's talking about an executive order to do that. The ATF's doing things that aren't under law. Right. Uh, these are lawless crooks. I mean, they we got caught shipping guns into Mexico, and they've got a bunch of other bills coming in, and now we're wide open. I mean... And you mentioned Emmanuel. Uh, this is the guy, after all, that celebrated the Alinsky notion that you never let a good crisis go to waste. And how did they get this passed? Well, they had us all breathless that the country, if we didn't have something happening by today, was going to default. That was a lie. And they continued to use it even after members of Congress explained many times no we don't default we do bring in 60 percent of what we're spending and that's more than enough to pay for this stupid interest that we keep racking up with the other 40 percent they would not refrain from using the word and they stampeded i think a lot of the members of the congress into this well we got to do something yeah. well why don't you just put a gun to your head that would be doing something <laughs> shut up it is absolutely enraging. I'm so mad I could spit. It's just over the top what these folks have done. They're going to be going home for August recess. We need to go and very politely, sternly lecture them that they are traitors. They have violated the Constitution. They've, if they did vote for it, now there were some, be, be careful. Don't go after the ones that voted right. Uh, tell them that what they have done is to transform the structure of American government. And unless we undo what they've done, America is never going to be the same. Larry Pratt will continue to check in with you at gunowners.org. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you for having me, Alex. God bless.